14 day at Gray Sloan took a turn for the terrifying in Grey's Anatomy Season 14, Episode 23, May 10's Cold as Ice, when April Kepner, Sarah Drew, got into a car crash just after sending out Alex, Justin Chambers, and Joe's, Camilla Luddington, wedding invitations. Luckily, she escaped major injuries in the crash, unlike McDreamy Circus Season 11, but she nearly froze to death afterward. Read on, Grey's fans. It's actually April's ex-fiancé, Matthew Taylor, Justin Bruining, who is brought to the hospital first. Matthew's fellow paramedics tell the Gray Sloan docs he flipped his car. Recognizing him as April's ex, Bailey, Chandra Wilson, gets an intern to page April, not realizing April never made it to work. Matthew, barely conscious, mumbles that April warned him about an icy curve, Shondaland Seattle is suffering through a cold snap in this episode, and then passes out. The docs are disquieted, and Owen goes to the crash scene to see if April was indeed traveling with Matthew. He finds Matthew's overturned car and then sees April at the bottom of a ravine. He texts Meredith, Ellen Pompeo, saying, found her. It's bad. When the ambulance carrying Owen and April gets back to Gray Sloan, Owen tells his colleagues April is hypothermic and without a pulse. The team realize they need to get her body temperature from 68 degrees to 86 before they can restart her heart. Meredith reassures the other docs, saying, the same thing happened to me and I was in way worse shape than April. Remember when she nearly drowned? Season 3 flashback. Then, Maggie. Kelly McCreary arrives and swings into action. As they work to raise April's body temperature, the team sees that she has seatbelt bruises, meaning she wasn't thrown from the car. Owen speculates she dialed 911, but then fell into the ravine in her disoriented state. The news of April's duress makes its way around the hospital and beyond. Ben, Jason George, finds out, for example, and comes to the hospital still in his firefighter gear. Alex finds out too, only because Murr finds him on his way to a wedding cake testing April had arranged. She was everything I wasn't, everything I had to work to be, he tells Murr, who tells him to stop using the past tense when referring to her. And Arizona, Jessica Capshaw, finds out too, and reveals some inside intel, April and Matthew had actually reconciled and have been dating for a few months. They had bonded over their respective grief since she lost a child and he lost a wife. April didn't want anyone at the hospital knowing because she didn't want anyone's judgment. She's in love, Arizona says. The only person who isn't informed of the April crisis is Jackson. He's in the middle of an operation and his colleagues figure his ignorance is bliss at the moment. But when he steps out of the or he overhears an intern talking about April's situation, and he runs to the air to be by his ex-wife's side. There, he finds Maggie defibrillating April over and over again, convinced she's seeing a rhythm on the EKG monitor. Jackson pleads for Maggie to stop torturing April, but Mur restrains him so Maggie can do her work. Finally, much to everyone's relief, April regains a pulse. She is alive, but she's still unconscious, and the doctors keep vigil at her bedside. They eventually leave Jackson alone with her, and he tearfully bargains with a god he's always been reluctant to acknowledge. I believe you're here, he says. I believe that. I believe in you. Oh, I want to believe. I will. I will. I will believe in you, okay? I'll do whatever you want. I'll do anything. If you exist, don't take her away, okay? Don't. God, don't do it. Don't take April. Please. And just like that, April squeezes his hand and opens her eyes. You prayed for me, and it worked, she smugly tells him. Ha ha. The other docs come back in the room and ask her near death experience. No white light. No pearly gates, says Alex. April responds, No, because I didn't die you guys. She matter-of-factly explains the science behind her close call, the extreme cold actually shut down her body, and the doctors rebooted it. She has special praise for Owen. You always come and bring me back, she tells him. Remember when he rescued her from her family farm?
Season 7 flashback. Happily, Matthew also seems to be en route to a full recovery. The doctors even combine his and April's hospital beds so they can convalesce together. In other big news, Arizona puts in her notice with Bailey, telling her she'll soon be moving with Sophia to New York City, where Mount Sinai has offered her a pediatric surgery position. Bailey is shocked and saddened by the news. Amelia is worried she only operated on Nicole because of her own judgment swaying brain tumor, and she has no idea whether to tell her about it. But Nicole already knows, thanks to her pillow talk with her and Amelia's mutual friend with benefits, Tom Korosik. Sex when you're blind is way, way better, she informs the docs. In other Amelia news, she comes home to find teen addict Betty. Peyton Kennedy is back. Betty claims she stayed sober during her sojourn and sweated out her withdrawal at a friend's house. Later, however, she fesses up and tells Amelia she lied, and a very understanding Amelia suggests they hit up a meeting. I thought you were a pixie stick, she tells Arizona. I thought you were an empty vessel full of sugar who skated in a hospital. I didn't know then that it would be one of the great privileges of my life to know you and work with you. But Arizona's former mentor Nicole Herman, special guest star Gina Davis, has other ideas. Nicole, whom we last saw in season 11, comes back to the hospital complaining of headaches and dizziness, worried her brain tumor is back. She's still blind as a result of Amelia's, Katerina Scorson, miraculous surgery, and she still has her blistering sense of humor. Good to see you, she quips when Amelia and Arizona enter the room. Getting back to Nicole, her symptoms are luckily just a result of a cerebrospinal fluid buildup, as the docs realize. As she and Nicole talk, Arizona says she's upset with Nicole for essentially ghosting her, but Nicole says she has been following Arizona's career closely and is very impressed with her maternal mortality prevention protocols. In fact, Arizona's successes saved Nicole from a dark place, she says. She realized she had effectively downloaded all of her fetal surgery knowledge into Arizona's brain. I could save more babies by training more Robinses than I could by myself with two working eyeballs, she recalls thinking. So she wants Arizona to join her in founding the Robbins Herman Center for Women's Health. She originally wanted to call it the Herman Robbins Center. But that makes it sound like we're a dude. Arizona cautiously asks if they could do it in New York, and when Nicole doesn't say no to the idea, and Arizona joyously hugs her. So there we have it. We know why Arizona is leaving Grace Sloan, at least, and the newly resurrected April will probably be leaving to find a new career with her new lease on life. First, however, is that Joel Lex wedding in the season 14 finale. Save the date for May 17.